This podcast is an introduction to the economic theory of cost minimization. It is the first of two podcasts on producer theory. It has been prepared for the class Economic Analysis at the Columbia School of International Public Affairs. I am Emanuele Giovatana. And I'm Ryan Huber. Cost minimization is a building block of the economic theory of the firm. The general idea is that firms choose a combination of inputs to produce some level of output with the objective of minimizing the cost of production. Our first task is to describe the production process. The firm uses some inputs, maybe it buys some inputs, to produce some output, again maybe with the objective of selling the output. The transformation of inputs in outputs is made possible by the use of a, te- it, of a technology that the firm has access to. Here you could ask, how do you describe the technology that is available to the firm? The answer is with a function that we call production function. For simplicity, assume that the firm produces only one output. We have the following definition. The production function gives the maximum amount of output that the firm can produce with any quantity of input it uses. Denote with Q the the quantity of output produced by the firm. And to keep things easy, let's assume that the firm uses only two inputs. Call them input 1 and input 2. Denote with X1 the quantity of the input 1 used by the firm and with the X2, the quantity of the input 2 used by the firm. Now, if the technology available to the firm is represented by the production function F, then we have that capital Q is equal to the function F calculated at the point X1, X2. That is, the quantity produced by the firm is the maximum amount of output that the firm can produce by using X1 units of input 1 and X2 two units of input two. Is it clear? Mm, Not really. Can you give me an example? Okay, I will give you a numerical example. Consider the following production function. Q, function of the inputs x1, x2, equal to x1 plus 1 over 4 times x2. If the firm uses one unit of input 1 and zero units of input 2, then the maximum amount of output that the firm can produce is 1. Now, if the firm uses 0 units of input 1 and 1 units of input 2, then the maximum amount of output that the firm can produce is 0.25. Again, if the firm uses 1 unit of input 1 and 1 unit of input 2, the maximum amount of output that the firm can produce is 1.25. And so on. For all the combination, For all the combinations x1, x2, the maximum amount of output is given by the production function calculated at x1, x2. Now, this example of production function is very simplified. However, it allows to discuss an important assumption that we make. That is, in general, there are different ways to produce the same amount of output. Is this assumption clear? Yeah, I think I get it. In the example before, you could produce one unit of output by using one unit of input 1 and zero units of input 2, or zero units of input 1 and four units of input 2. That's right. And in fact, in many other different ways. 